So we're here in Chelsea and I've been lucky enough to be invited to one of Palestinian chef Judy Kella's infamous suppers, which happens here at The Fiend. Uh, tonight we're gonna find out just why she's so passionate about sharing Palestinian food with the wider world. I'm trying to just sort of educate people about our ingredients, not just the dishes, it's from Palestine yeah. originally. And it's just sort of broadening horizons. I think these events work because people want to socialize. They're Pakistani, they're Indian, they're That's French. Do you like these yeah, um, the lentils from your town? <laughs> you know, I think people come here kind of with the same notion that yeah, everyone's open, everyone wants to kind of, kind of get to know one another, which is really nice. Why the supper club? I just wanted to sort of have no responsibility of having my own place. Uh, and I just wanted to sort of educate people about our food. All those people you saw, they were all strangers. I mean, there are a few usual suspects that come every time, which is at the, great, at the, at at the, the event. Mm -hmm. And I don't know anyone. They all come together and they all make friends with each other, all passing their numbers it was a to really, each other. Yeah, it was a very, I almost felt like everyone knew each other. No, they don't. There but, are a few that do, but... I mean, you could tell, but within 10 minutes, the pockets of familiarity, like, expanded. Yeah. And this is the whole point. They're coming to a place with strangers, food that they don't normally eat, and they're all having a great time, thank goodness. I mean, sometimes it can go wrong, but... But then they leave feeling like it's home. Yeah, and we're all become friends, you know, like the people that you met. I didn't know many of them. They all have become friends of mine through food and through Palestine and love for Palestine. And um, I'm so happy for it. My circle has become bigger and stronger and better. Judy Kella was born to Palestinian parents and raised in the UK. For her, food is the language of love that has the power to unite people and perhaps bring us each a little closer to home. You've never been home, right? No, I've never been home, but I hear from my parents and stories my mom used to tell us about her mom when they were in Palestine. So my parents grew up with a very positive sort of image of Palestine and they wanted us to have it as well. You know, we're always represented in the news quite terribly and there's always another side. There's one side, another side, and then there's the truth. And, you know, I try to bring this side of it and people enjoy it and they are getting educated about it and they love it and they meet people and they have discussions amongst themselves because there are people from all... You met some people at yeah. the dinner and everyone you had an English guy sitting next to you, you had a Jewish girl and next to you on the other side a Lebanese guy and then a Palestinian guy. So it was all types of people and they're all coming together eating and they're respecting the fact that these are traditional dishes from Yafa and Gaza. Being at the center of these connections gave Judy the idea of hosting her supper club more frequently. Now it's on every two weeks in London, where she serves up a range of Palestinian dishes from her cookbook, Palestine on a Plate, Memories from My Mother's Kitchen. I got rejected by every other publisher because of the title. They loved the book, they just did not want the title to have Palestine on it. And I rejected every rejection in the sense that they said we, we will consider it if the title is called, you know, Petals and Honey or I don't know, something different, which is great, but not for something that means so much to me. This is resistance. This is resistance, uh, you know, being silenced and told by other publishers that I couldn't have it if it was not on this condition. I resisted their options and went and found someone else. But yeah, this is home. I make this all the time. Cool. All the time. Yeah, it seems like a staple. Yeah. It's like, what are we going to make? Ma'lube. Ma We're making msakha. La! No, Ma'lube. <laughs> I really want msakha. I saw dishes like ma'lube being uh, labeled as Israeli uh, dishes of the day in several restaurants in London. And. Um, it frustrated me, upset me, because it's not. Even the name Ma'lube, what does it mean? It means to flip over, flip, it's an Arabic word. How can it be an Israeli dish? You told me earlier, if there was ever a nuclear war, this is the place to be. This is where we should you be. You will never go why. hungry. We have every kind of meat, shanks, mince, cube, chicken, lukhiya, dates, knafe, what are anab? Food is love. You can see it through the, the recipes that are in the book and the events that I'm having. Um, and I just want to sort of put Palestine on a, on a different conversation where people are mm -hmm. respecting it and enjoying it and seeing that we're actually the same as everyone else. 